In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. It was Xavier, I'm like Israel, I'm like our winner Kabusan, Zetasalena, Wagabra Medanitan, Elizabeth Yahu. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who made salvation for his people. May his name be blessed from this generation to the next generation, now and forever, and to the ages of all ages. Amen. Welcome, everyone, to another video covering the different themes or the different weeks and the different Sundays of the Great Net Fast or Abi Yitzhom. Now this week we're going to be covering uh, Debrezit. Debrezit is a good word which loosely translates to the Mount of Olives. And it's on this mountain that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took his holy disciples and taught them about his Dagen Mitzat, or as we call it, the Second Coming of Christ. Now, when most of us, there's a lot of churches, especially in the, in the evangelical part of the world or the Protestant side where Throughout the entire year, they talk about the end of the world. Throughout the entire year, they preach and their sermons is all about the end of the world and the coming of God and the, the wrath of Christ and that Christ is coming down on earth and all the sinners will, will be uh, taken away and all these things, like all of these evil and like harsh and just bad things that they're all preach out throughout the entire the year in order to bring fear or instill fear into the people. Now in the Orthodox Church, this is not the way that we do things. In the Orthodox Church, the theme of Debra Zayt is not to instill fear, but rather to instill uh, a, a wakingness and preparation of the soul. This entire theme of Debrezit is to talk about how can we prepare our souls and how, if we are not prepared, how do we get prepared? Because Christ is coming. Christ will be coming, but we do not know when he's coming. I, it, mine blows me, like there are a lot of documentaries, especially about the book of Revelations, where people are trying to decode when Christ is going to come. Like they go to the they go to the book of Revelations, they try to figure out what this means, they try to calculate, okay, Christ is not is gonna come this and this. Like to the point, I'm sure you guys are familiar, where the entire world was convinced that 2012, the world is gonna end. In 2012, they made a movie about it, the people started profiting. Even now that like, people are saying, well, 2012 in America is like gone, but in Ethiopia, like it's 2012, so there's still like a, maybe like the world might still end. And it minds like that's not the entire, that's not the point of uh, it's not to figure out when Christ is coming or what time and where will he be there. No, it's to prepare ourselves. It's to say, are you prepared for the second coming of Christ? Now, to those who think that they, when they're watching this video, they think, oh, I'm going to figure out when he's coming. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said this. He said in the book of Matthew or the gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 42 to 44, he stated this. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming, but know this. That if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore also, be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. You see, our Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he said it. Um, the Son of Man is coming at an hour which you do not expect. Like, he gave a great example. He said, if a person, like, we can be prepared. How, can, how well can we be prepared for a thief? Like, we can have security in our houses. We can lock the doors, you know, we can put up cameras and everything, but like, there's nothing that we can do or like enough that we can prepare if a thief decides to break into our house, no matter how much security, no matter how much camera that we have, if a thief decides to break into our house, he's going to break into it, regardless of what we have, right? So Christ is going to, that's a simple, Christ is coming like a thief at night. So for those who are not prepared, they're going to be shocked. They're going to be running around, oh my goodness, Christ is coming. I didn't repent. I didn't go to confession. I didn't use my time. But for those who are prepared, it's going to be a day of glory. It's going to be a day of happiness for the true Christians who have used their time on earth to repent and to go to confession. Now, like I said, the theme of this week or the theme of this Sunday, Debra Zayt, is all about preparation or preparatory. Now, see, these are some of the questions that we should be asking ourselves throughout this week. The first question. Um, what am I doing or where am I in my life? Like, where am I in my life? Like, if we really look at, look at our, ourselves, we examine, some of us are in college, some of us are, you know, graduates, or, uh, or some of us are in high school. Like, throughout our entire life, we pinpoint and we decide what we're going to do. What high school we're going to go to, 
what major we're going to pick, what college will fit to the major that we want to pick. So we pick that college based on the major and then that major, if it has a good salary or not, where I would be going, we like to the T, we capture our life. We make sure that our life is going according to how we want it. We make sure everything is lined up. But what about our spiritual life? Do we give enough care like we give care to our, or our worldly life? Do we give it to our spiritual life? So where am I in my life? That's one of the questions that we must ask ourselves. Another question is, how is my spiritual life going? How is my spiritual life doing? How is your spiritual life? When was the last time you went to your confession father? When was the last time you confessed? If you, have, if you don't have a confession father, what have you been doing in order to prepare yourself to get a confession father? Have you been seeking healing? This is what we talked about in the Metzagu. We talked about how the man, the paralytic man, he waited for Christ or he waited for someone to heal him. But who came instead? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come and heal him. He was expecting a man, but who came? Christ himself. He was at the right place at the right time, seeking healing. He was there for 38 years, wanting healing. We ourselves were sick because of our many sins that we have done. Are we seeking healing? Where are we in our spiritual life? And the third question is, am I ready for Christ's coming? We've already declared he's coming. We've already known that. Yes, he's coming, but am I ready for it? Like, am I ready? Like, if he came right now, would he say to me, come into the kingdom of God, prepared by my father for his children? Or would he say, or would he turn me away and say, go into the fiery pits of hell, which was prepared for, his, for the devil and his angels? Where are we in our spiritual life, my brothers and sisters? These are the things that we're supposed to be concentrating on during this week, David is it. Now, as everybody knows, there's been going around the coronavirus. And during this coronavirus, everybody's freaking out. But if we really look at it, like a few weeks ago, before this was a real like big deal, like in America, like the coronavirus started in Asia. And in Asia, when it started, everybody in America was like, oh, okay, corona, ayosh, I understand. Okay, there's something's going on, but it hasn't hit home yet. It's not here, so I don't got to worry about it. And then it spreads to Europe. And then people are like, ah, da, 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 okay, all right, it's getting close, but you know, still we don't have to worry about the gift. We'll start giving out warnings, you know, start news here, or warning over here, you know, it's a little bit cautious here and there. And then it comes to America. And then what does everybody do? All right, we need to go. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness, where am I going? The virus, then the news comes out. And then people, celebrities and our leaders are coming out with gas masks, like a gas mask. And like people are going walking around with masks on their face and like the, the entire like American citizens are leaving. Like even when we, when we see someone, I you know, stay over there, you know, Corona, Corona, yeah, no need. Like because what happened when it was in China? We weren't really like when it was in Asia, that virus, we weren't really worried about it. But when it came to our homeland, when it came to us, that's when we start being cautious. My brothers and sisters, the son of man, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he's coming. So we have to prepare ourselves. We cannot say, Ara ganano. Ganano, this is what I don't We have to be prepared at all times. Now, what are some of the signs which Christ gave to the holy disciples? What are some of the signs that he gave them? Now, there are 11 signs. The church teaches there are 11 signs which Christ gave to the disciples. But because of the time consent, we'll be going over only four of those signs. So the first sign which Christ gave to the disciples is, he told them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. This is the first sign, and this is the most dangerous sign ever. Many will come proclaiming their Christ. Not just that they're Christ, that they're the Messiah, but many will come proclaiming they're the prophet sent by God. This is something that we've seen in history. Like, this is something that's been going on, like, before the nativity of Christ, and after Christ's ascension to the heavens. Like, this is something that has going on to this day and before Christ came. Like, if we look at the current history, let's look into uh, history right now. And let's jog our memories. Uh, there was a man, maybe if you're familiar with him, Pastor Jim Jones. There's a man named Pastor Jim Jones. I don't know if you're familiar with him. In 1970, this is real, you can search it up. In 1970, Jim Jones proclaimed to be the incarnate of Christ, who would cleanse the world. So he ended up gathering people saying, I am Christ, I am the, son, the Messiah, I am the second coming of Christ. And through his false teachings, he ended up gathering people to him. He gathered around a thousand followers to him. And we gathered these other thousand followers, they started being very devoted to him. So what he does is he tells them, you know what? Since you have been good, faithful to me, 
Let's abandon our life here. Let's abandon the houses, the secular world, and let's go into Chaka or let's go into the forest and let's live the rest of our lives there. So these people, these naive people, they said, and they, Christ is the false Christ, the, the, the person who proclaims to be Christ. So he took them into the forest. In 1978, a tragic thing happened. He organized a mass murder suicide of both children and adults at Jamestown. It's called the Jamestown Massacre. And later shot himself after the murder were done. This is considered to be the largest mass murder suicide in modern history. This is a serious thing, my brothers and sisters. This is serious. These people are coming and deceiving many. Not only that, if we look at Africa, there was a man, like, this is a true story, and I'm not gonna lie. There was this man, he proclaimed to be Christ, and more than a thousand people, he had followers, and he told them, you know, like, it's not good for your body. Like, sad, natural food from the grass is very good. So he ended, he commanded them, and he got the entire village to go and eat grass. Like, I'm not, I wish I was joking. Like, this is a real thing that's happening. We may be laughing when we see these things out of these people are crazy. No. This is the time that we're living in. This is the age that we're living in. We must be watchful. We must prepare ourselves. We might say, I am a man. Gonna worry about when the Antichrist comes. These people, they're just, you know, they're little bit compared to what the Antichrist would do and what he would change. So we must protect ourselves, protect our hearts. And we must be watchful at all times. The second sign which Christ gave to the apostles, he said, And you will hear, of wars, rumors of wars, for nations will rise up against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Now, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, knowing that happens is, because of our hatred that we have for one another, we grow cold, and we do war, and we become one another, we go cold to one another, and there becomes many wars occur. Even in fact, one of our, our fathers, he said this about this on this commentary. He stated this. He said, Satan wishes to destroy his people's emotions so they see their brother as evil ones divided or in a, uh, d dividing them and arising wars. They therefore live in fear of wars and those who are untouched by wars, these and those who are exposed, they are exposed to pestilence and diseases and get distributed to their own life. And if they escape diseases, they are chased away by earthquakes which happen all of a sudden. So the adversary has the aim of making the believer be far from the joy of Christ's coming. Satan preoccupies them with human problems. He occupies us what? With human problems. Such as war, or we worried about our health and problems of nature, such as earthquake. It is as if the entire world has become dimmed in the believer's eyes with no one to help or for him to find any support. All of these wars, all of these tragic things that are coming, that are, that's going to happen, it's a way for the adversary, the devil, to blind the believer from seeing that there is a God. Many people, like, there's a question everybody asks. Why is this happening? Like, why is there such war? Why is there evil in the world? If God exists, why is there so much evil and so much torment? Why are there children dying, starving? This is what's going on. The devil, because of our, because he knows how we are so attached to our emotions, he makes us think, during seeing all this starvation, all these things, he makes us think God doesn't exist. God is not there. God is not there. So he starts deceiving the people one by one, one by one, they start leaving Christ. This is something that we have to watch out. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, knowing that there will be tribulation, he said this, These things I have spoken to you, that you, that in me, you may have peace in the world. You will have tribulation, he said. You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. This is the best. He's saying, Yes, there will be war. Yes, there will be famine. Yes, there will be hunger. Yes, there will be diseases. But be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. You need peace? Come to me. Are you sick? You need healing? Come to me. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he already knew there's going to be war. And there's going to be battle. You know what he said? He gave us hope. He gave us peace for the present and hope for the future. The third sign which our Lord God gave to the disciples, he said to them, then you'll be delivered up to tribulation and kill you, and then they will kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. He said, you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. This is the most saddest one of all, all because this is something that we're seeing currently in Ethiopia and Egypt, all over the world. Our brothers and sisters are dying for their faith. In Yagen, busy with the free world that we're living in, with the free religion that we're living in, like in a way where we can free speech, free religion, but I'm a Our brothers and our sisters are dying for their faith. 
shedding the blood for their faith, for Christ. And we here can't even wake up to go to church. Like, so sad to not walk out We have to change our ways. It's going to get worse. Brother will turn against brother, sister against sister, father against mother. People will start turning against each other. And when that happens, the love will grow cold, which is the next sign which he gave to us. And, and then they, and then the fourth sign, and then then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another, like I said. The devil loves division. Many of us know this in the Ethiopian church. This has been going on for a while. God, God loves unity, but the devil loves division. Because if he divides us, it will be, e be easy for us, it will be easy for him to destroy us one by one. What's the solution? Unity. What's the solution? Love. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ knew this will happen, so he gave us a sign. When you see these signs, my brothers and sisters, do not be startled. Do not be scared. Do not say, oh my goodness, this is happening. What is going to happen? Oh my goodness, I'm not ready. Oh, don't do that. He gave us these signs in order to be prepared. Not to instill fear, but instill preparation into our souls. But to awake our souls so that we may be prepared. This is an example that actually happened to Christ himself. If you recall, when he entered Jerusalem, or on the, on the feast that we call Hosanna, the people, let me get him story. The people, they came to him, they sang, oh my, this is Christ, this is the Lord, this is the King, they praised him, Hosanna, the King of David, or the Hosanna, the highest. Praise it be his name. Hosanna, Hosanna, good. You know what they did days, a few days later? The same people who praised him in Hosanna, the same people who said, we need to make him a king. The same people who said, yes, we believe you. Hosanna, what happened a few days later? Crucify him. Kill him. Take him away. The same people. He said it the best. Many will be offended and will betray one another. This is something that happened to Christ himself. Something that will happen to us as well. So be aware. The fourth sign, which I already spoke, and uh, the, on top of that, like I said, the love of many will grow cold. Like I said, love, if there's no love, the devil loves division. So we must have love within ourselves. Saint Jerome, one of the saints in our church said, if God is fire, he is fire, so to pull us away from the devil's cold. I wish God grants us that the, that the cold would not creep up into our hearts, for we do not commit sin except after the love becomes cold. We do not commit sin, except after the love becomes cold. Now, we've seen these signs. I've told you what's going to happen, or rather Christ has told us what's going to happen, and these signs. So, what's left? What's left for the believer to do? Like, if I, did, if I was not a believer, and not in Banabo, like, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to this is going to occur. Like, I'm gonna freak out. I'm gonna say, "Day, like, why would I? There's no hope. There's no hope. What's what's there left for me? What am I gonna do? If all these things are gonna happen, and even he has said that even the elect might even be led astray. So, what's there left for me? How am I supposed to fight this? How will I be saved? How will I be saved? My brothers and sisters. We must not forget that God is still present. That God allowed these temptations, allowed these tribulations for a moment. Just for a single moment. Because God does exist. God will save the, 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 the righteous and the sinners. He will judge. Once again, do not despair, but be prepared. For God is still present. So what, what, what's our job? What's our job when all these things are happening? I'm glad that you asked. He said, only at those times the people who will be saved are those who endure. Those who endure till the end will be saved. Those who endure till the end will be saved. That's our job. Look, easy as that. We must endure. We must endure these temptations. We must endure these trials. We must endure knowing God will come. Like our Savior, He will come riding on His white horse to come and save us. Like our superhero, our love, or like our Father, He's going to come. He's not going to leave us in this fire. He's going to come and deliver us. What's our job? 
የኛ ድርሻ ምንድነው patience and endurance this is something that the church teaches like if you really teach or if you really read the church fathers or the teachings of the church fathers they teach us that patience and suffering is the way which we win mercy and compassion from god patience and suffering like this is biblical and this is if you read it like this is something that's been going on like this is something that the, the monks and the saints like they've been going through like they went into tribulation but god delivered them because of their patience because of their faith in god so we must keep our patience and our faith he commands us to be patient and never waver in our faith but to endure till the end to keep our christian morals to keep our christian morals this is something that we're, we're not doing one small fatana of like gabrasadum or stuff like these these topics these tense topics we waver in our christian morals we waver in our christian morals like this is not what does it mean to be a christian if it doesn't mean like we're supposed to be representing christ on earth but when these things like i don't want to offend my friend i don't want to offend society so i'll keep my mouth voice or i'll keep my mouth shut they're silencing the voice of Tawhidu. They're silencing the voice of Christians. So they can have their freedom. What about our freedom? You must endure till the end. Trials and tribulations. Many will come to you. Like, don't you see? God doesn't exist. Live. Live your life. There's no, like, there's no end to suffering. No, don't believe them. If you really search and study the saints or the saints of the church, we can see that because they endured temptation and persevered through temptation without losing faith in God, they were worthy of the title saint. And God delivered them from trials and tribulations. So what does that mean? That means deacons. Deacons. Look. Look. What's going on in this world? Look towards St. Stephen, the first martyr, who, was, who died for Christ's sake, who died worshiping God. Deacons, look towards St. Stephen. He died for his faith. It's not all about our clothes that we wear or the the, the, the kabba that we or the cope that we, we have on our heads. Or our good voice, you know, our, our good voice that we have. It's about our faith. It's about are we in those times, whenever Christ comes, will he say, Yes, you proclaimed me. Yes, you actually like you lived a life worthy to enter the kingdom of God. Some of us were just living a life, uh, like a Snapchat filter type of life. We have to change. God shed his blood publicly, died publicly, proclaimed his love for us publicly. What about us? Will we do these things for him publicly or behind the closed doors? These are the things we have to do. We, we have to be ready. Christ said to us, to the disciples rather, and even to us, he said, Antumu wa itu burhanu la'adam. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Be a light to this darkness, my brothers and sisters. Pope Shinoda said, when Christ comes his second time, he will not judge, saying, why did you commit sin? Why did you do this? How can you do this? He's going to say, you did sin, you committed sin? Okay. Why didn't you repent? Why didn't you confess? Why didn't you come? Like, I shed my body, I gave my blood, and I gave you my body, my blood. Like, it's so easy. The medicine is right here. Come to me, but you're not coming? That makes no sense. Like, I gave you everything that I could. I gave you my love. I, gave, I sacrificed myself, which is above all, like, a show of love. And you're saying, like, I'm not going to come because I, I'm like, no, you're denying it. That's, that has nothing to do with me. That's with you. We have to change ourselves, my brothers and sisters. We have to change ourselves. May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep us in His mercy. And may His Mother, the Holy Mother, the Theotokos, the Mother of God, may she intercede for us all. And may the saints and the heavenly angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, may their blessings and may their prayers and may their protection be with us all. Amen. Glory be to God the Father. Glory be to God the Son. Glory be to God the Holy Spirit. Amen. وسواة الأكزيابير